kind of small talk, Epicenter Labs. So they kind of list two organizations up here that you would imagine would be really important. The Epic Economy Amplifier, um, focusing on projects that would um, in, you know, amplify the Epic Cash economy. So, um, and we'll get into that in the white paper. And you'll, by the end of this white paper reading, you will understand how ECK could amplify the Epic Cash um, economy. So Epicenter Labs is a technical um, center. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, all what makes that, what comprises that, but it is fair to say that there are some volunteers participating in Epicenter Labs. There are some private interests that um, tie into Epicenter Labs, meaning you know um, people in the community can go and fund things on their own. Um, so that's a pop, that's one thing that can happen there. Um, and the next big thing we say we see on the very first page of the ECK white paper are these two words: energy efficient. We know Ethereum made a really big deal about sunsetting proof of work mining because of concerns about how uh, the mining uh, wasn't green and uh, was destroying the planet. Um, and what we saw were a bunch of GPU miners, which, you know, a lot of people have graphics cards. So there's like billions of gamers in the world that have really high-end computing processing components and as well as visual graphics uh, processing components. So CPUs and GPUs in their gaming computers. And um, the thing about that is it's far less environmentally harmful than say ASICs where those things just get, um, they don't even get recycled a lot of times, they just get thrown in the trash and uh, and you just end up with a lot of electronic waste. Um, so energy efficient, we're gonna learn about that in this white paper. You can see um, that was a very big front and center kind of thing there. And um, yeah, so moving on here, Donna, thanks for the rose, appreciate that. So um, it says ECK, social currency. So it tells us up front it's energy efficient and it's a social currency. Haha, <laughs> right on. And John Coleman says, I hear you. That is very reassuring. Getting more confident in the system. I really appreciate that. And so on again on this front page, we've just covered the Epic Economy Amplifier, a little bit about what that means. Epicenter Labs, that's basically our technical developers, energy efficient, um, more so than Ethereum ever could have been being focused on only GPUs and way more so than uh, the ASIC mining that happens in Bitcoin. So ECK, and then the next big thing it says, it's a social currency. So we'll learn more about how that's a social currency in this white paper. Fast, lightweight, green, flexible, future-proof. So that's all very nice. Got a truck on down the road. I'm listening. Excellent. So I'm happy to be your your um, your audible uh, books on tape kind of thing tonight. And uh, hopefully, you know, this can fit into some people's um, hot tub time or driving time or elliptical treadmill time. <laughs> and uh, you know, or and ideally, eventually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload this to YouTube and um, that will be there for everybody's listening pleasure. And they can also adjust the speed on that. So if they just want to chew through this in you know, a little bit faster time, if I'm talking too slow, then people can just adjust the speed as they feel what works for them. So Canary Network for Epic Cash, ECK, Epic Karma, and then it tells us how to pronounce ECK right down here, it's E C K. All right. So just to, I'm not going to do this with every page where I read everything on it like four or five times, but I just kind of wanted to slowly start this out till I knew I had a couple uh, listeners on the line. And so again, Epic Economy Amplifier, Epicenter Labs, it's energy efficient, it's fast, lightweight, green, flexible, and future-proof. And we're going to explore all these, uh, how it does that in, in this white paper. And it's called, it's, it's a social currency. And it's 
considered the Canary Network for Epic Cash, which in discussions in the Telegram group, which is again, t.me slash Epic Cash, um, other people describe the Canary Network as a network where you do a lot of testing and observing as well. So you can observe a network in certain uh, stress environments and you can see how it performs. And that can do two things. It can show you how future um, feature releases will perform on the mainnet and it will give you a level of assurance and confidence that when we take new features from the Canary Network of ECK and move it to Epic Cache that it will have been tested extensively and safe for the um, Epic Cache network. And it also potentially gives you an indicator of anything that may be wrong on the existing chain. So maybe we think that Epic Cache is, um, is not gonna have any problems, but maybe as we're testing it in different scenarios, maybe we learn something new that drives a patch uh, and a repair to the existing mainnet of Epic Cache. And so these are kind of two things to think about of the value that we get in a canary network. All right, table of contents, um, abstract context specifications, um, the merge, you can see a red line through that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Motivation, anonymity and privacy, and some other uh, kind of properties of that anonymity and privacy, um, different technologies that go into that, like Dandelion++, I2P, and Tor, auditability and compliance, censorship resistance, centralization resistance, confiscation resistance, and decentralization. And a lot of what we're reading here are things that were um, present, are, are currently present in the Epic Cache mainnet. Um, so if, you've read, if you're familiar with Epic Cache, um, maybe the white paper for Epic Cache didn't really go into as much detail. So this is kind of like a nice addendum add-on to the Epic Cache um, white paper. So we're gonna talk about scalability, speed and throughput, use cases, um, and then there's an appendix and revision history at the very end. So abstract, all right. ECK is a mobile native, energy efficient, scalable social payment system that serves as a canary network for Epic. Like its shared DNA progenitor, Epic, ECK is a peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash allowing online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without needing a financial institution. ECK, however, adds a much needed testing, development, and economic capabilities which are explained herein and intended for the betterment of Epic scalability and user experience. Together, Epic and ECK provide a comprehensive solution for permissionless peer-to-peer -peer payments, forming the basis for the first true practical decentralized payment ecosystem. All right, and so this is a, a white paper that is still in the draft version, so, um, all, all the, um, so uh, yeah, so the context is, uh, and we're gonna have a graphic that we add here, but the context is that 1.7 billion people lack access to traditional financial services. 15.1 billion mobile devices possess the technical capability to, native, to natively run ECK end to end locally. And it's important to point out that a lot of other blockchains a lot of other crypto projects can't claim the same. You can't run a full node on of Bitcoin on, on most smartphones. But with Epic Cash and with ECK, that capability is there because of how lightweight and scalable the blockchain is. So we're gonna get into that here in the specifications. Epic runs a one megabyte, 60 second configuration yielding 1.4 million transactions a day capacity. ECK proves the robustness of a four megabyte, 40 second configuration, allowing Epic to safely scale to 8.6 billion transactions a day versus 350,000 for BTC, which is a 2,400% increase in throughput. As ECK pushes the frontiers, Epic's safe 
pace of scalability accelerates. Block reward, size, and time. And so here it lists um, these eras. So there was Epic Era 3, Epic Era 4. So we're currently in Epic Era 3, which has a block size of one megabyte, block time of 60 seconds, which yields 1,440 blocks per day, 1,000 transactions per block, 1,440,000 tra transactions a day, uh, which gives us about 17 transactions per second. Um, and so that's era three, which is what we are currently in. And this, again, this is the, um, the table that I'm reading from at the moment on your screen. And don't forget, um, if you are, don't do this if you're driving, but if you happen to be looking at the screen, it is possible to have this in landscape mode versus portrait mode, which is like how TikTok usually does it. But um, yeah, and if you were able to hide the comments, that would be even more helpful to see more on the screen. Um, so yeah, uh, and then it, it expresses here that ECK in era five would go to a four megabyte block size. So it's looking like actually what they're telling us here is that even on Epic mainnet, before ECK get, even gets involved, it's looking like they're proposing to um, push Epic to, or, or maybe they'll do, do this on ECK first as, as a test net. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that rolls out, but you know, it is clear here, the changes in block size and block time and how that scales up the amount of transactions. We go from currently 17 transactions a second and then in future eras, potentially as many as 12,800 transactions per second. So consensus, what does that even mean? Let's, uh, so consensus, there, there's the Nakamoto consensus, which tells us that the longest chain rules. And that's, you can read that in the Bitcoin white, white paper. They uh, express that. I don't think they call it the Nakamoto consensus, but I think after the fact in a historical context, people refer to Bitcoin uh, the, the consensus model used in Bitcoin as the Nakamoto consensus. And that's, you know, it says right there that the longest chain rules. Um, so yeah, I just kind of highlighted that a little bit. Longest chain rule. Um, and so in addition to that, and why, we, why you get that plus plus on there, that's telling you that something is different. That's telling you that Epic Cash and, you know, the people behind Epic Cash and ECK do something different here. And what's different here is the polyphasic proof of work the Fehuada, Fehuada, uh, which is a one-third random X, one-third progressive uh, pro programmatic proof of work, and one-third crystals dilithium. And that crystals dilithium is the quantum computing attack resistance algorithm. Um, so that's really exciting stuff. I think we'll get more into that in the white paper, in, in the rest of this white paper. Economics, the initial supply is 17 million. The emission is 14.4 million uh, per day with no having. So every day there's just going to be 14.4 million. And so compare that to Epic Cash real quick. The, the most Epic Cash that will ever exist is 21 million in however many decades, centuries that Epic Cash is in existence. 21 million Epic Cash is all there can ever be. With ECK, there was 14.4 million coins. <laughs> All right. So, and the first block will um, be for 140 billion. And my math, I was off by like a zero. And I had that in my head as like almost three years. No, that's like almost 27 years of supply. And some people have, uh, you know, uh, expressed concerns, um, but they haven't offered uh, alternatives along with why for the, their alternatives. And so uh, we're a pretty open community. Like we want to hear new thoughts and ideas. Absolutely. If you think it should be 14 billion, if you think it should be 1.4 billion, which would, um, I think that would be more like, I think if it was 1.4 billion, that would be more like three years supply. As it is now, it's 27 years of supply. And um, yeah, and so that, the initial supply, I believe that initial supply would go to people who hold Epic. Yeah, so that's like a, like a 1.1. So like right now, the, the supply of uh, Epic Cash is about a 
coming up on 17 million, it's like 16 point something million epic cash in circulation. And so that's that initial supply. And then on the very first block, 140 billion are created. And it, it gets into that a little bit later. So I'm gonna keep this moving here about 15 minutes into the reading. The language is Rust, just like Epic Cache. The um, code base language is done in Rust, which is known as a um, memory safe. They consider it memory safe coding language. Um, and it also compiles um, and tells you, or it tells you about um, issues and errors in the code before it compiles, which a lot of other coding languages don't do that. So um, it, it's ideal for uh, applications that need to be fast and reliable is what Rust is known for. So that's my rudimentary uh, knowledge of Rust. So ledger structure. It's a layer one coin. It is not a token writing on some Ethereum chain or some other chain. It is its own layer one coin, its own blockchain. Data structure consists of inputs, outputs, range proofs, and kernels. All right, Genesis supply distribution. At Genesis, the UTXO set from Epic will carry, which means that holders of one Epic coin will automatically receive one ECK coin. So much as when Bitcoin Cash did its work from Bitcoin, um, there was a one for one matching uh, basically on that snapshot of Bitcoin wallets at that point in time when that fork of, occurred of Bitcoin cash away from Bitcoin all of those Bitcoin holders were instantly if you know if they had a hundred Bitcoin then they instantly had a hundred Bitcoin cash so that's similar um, to how ECK will roll out as, as um, not necessarily a fork well I guess it would be a fork yeah I think that's fair to say ECK is a, is a fork with um, just hugely different, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem um, features such as the discretion, which we talked about. So the first mined block will contain 140 billion coins to support the growth and development of the network. So it tells you right there how many coins will be on the first block and why it was set at 140 billion to, and that is to support the growth and development of the network. So the idea here is they want to grow and develop the network. And that would be the purpose for those 140 billion coins on that Genesis, Genesis block. Ongoing supply distribution. Purpose, proof of work mining. 67% goes to proof of work mining. This enables widespread participation because anybody with a CPU, anybody with a graphics card can mine. Um, let's see, coins will be unlocked using the same seed words, using any compatible wallet. So this is just describing the one-to-one um, -one match of um, EPIC to ECK. So it says no registration is required for Vitex holders, ECK will automatically appear. And it, yeah, so coins will be unlocked using the same seed words. So it gives you the two scenarios there. If you just have a wallet with seed words, um, it's just going to be uh, you could use those same seed words uh, patched into the new ECK wallet system. Uh, and then it tells you what happens for Vitex. Uh, automatically, uh, ECK will appear for those folks. And so um, it says 67%, and that is uh, broken out here to the three different mining algorithms. Uh, so we see 22.33% to RandomX, 22.33% to Crystals Dilithium, and those first two are CPU mineable. So um, a huge chunk, like nearly half of the coins mined will be mineable with a, with a CPU. So if you have a good CPU, you're ready, you're gonna be ahead of the game there. Uh, programmatic proof of work gets the remaining 22.33% for graphics cards. There's what's termed here as a license fee. 33% and it's in bold. <laughs> so, um, because yeah, this is you know proof of work mining, and then there's a license fee. So license uh, license fee. So two big major components here, um, highlighted in bold, um, and this li license fee goes to ecosystem support. Eleven percent to Epicenter Labs, which you may recall was up here at the very top. Epicenter Epicenter Labs on the top right there of your screen. You see that? Oop. I didn't mean to do that. Well, how did this, wow, OK. 
Okay, bear with me. Technical difficulties here. This thing. Okay, so. This is just great. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just trying to sort my screen back out here. All right, it's almost back to normal. Okay. Weird. All right. So we're talking about where this, uh, what's called a license fee goes. Uh, we talked about that Epicenter Labs, which is the Technical Development Center. Uh, locked Liquidity Floor, Buyer of Last Resort, which is pretty cool. It's like um, in DeFi, they have this thing that's called a, a rising liquidity fl floor. And so it only ever ever rises. And so you only under, ever end up having more and more liquidity. And liquidity is hugely important. So uh, it looks like the developers of ECK have plans to have a long-term rising liquidity floor. Um, and I look forward to seeing how that performs. Um, Epic Insurance or E-Star PIC Insurance, 11% goes to that. It's called a war chest. Um, that's there for legal entanglements and to be prepared for legal kind of issues. So um, another way this was expressed to me, explained is that Epicenter Labs, um, is a is it is like a private entity so like you know much in the way not or maybe not much in the way but um similar to how Ep, uh what's his name back his last name is back uh, i can't think of his first name um runs blockstream he's a ceo ceo for blockstream for bitcoin you know basically what i'm getting at is anybody can stand up a corporation in support of some blockchain and that happens and so um, a lot of, you know, what happens in Epicenter are community inputs, but that doesn't mean that, um, it's exclusively the community. Um, uh, there can be, uh, I mean, well, and then at the same time, it's weird to, what do you consider com communities? Like, you know, basically there, there can be kind of like tiger teams in the community that, that goes and do, uh, goes and does amazing things. And so I think that's kind of what we're seeing here with ECK. Um, motivation. So we're gonna move in here to motivation and what is behind, what is the driving factor behind ECK? And the first thing they mention is scalability development. So this is like the second time we're really hammering on the scalability and that it currently runs a one megabyte 60 second configuration yielding 1.4 million transactions a day capacity. ECK seeks to prove the robustness of a four megabyte 40 second configuration, allowing Epic to safely scale to 8.6 million a day versus 350,000 for, for BTC. Again, this is repetitive, but you know, I think that's good. Do that when you want to make a point. This development in Epic Cash takes us to a 24 X, 24 times faster throughput than BTC. As Epic pushes the frontiers, Epic's safe pace of scalability accelerates because problems can be found and resolved in ECK before making their way into Epic. And that's exactly the point I made earlier. So I think this is like my third or fourth time reading the ECK white paper. So, uh, you know, some things are sink sinking through the first and second layers here. Um, getting excited the more I read this and the more I get in sync with the plans of the technical development team behind Epic Cash and ECK. So the ECK scaling roadmap increases capacity through a combination of increased block size and faster block times, leading to an exponential improvement in, ult in the ultimate transaction throughput processing capability. And there we are again, a um, little bit different on the um, table, but um, similar, um, they just have, uh, 
different uh, iterations of the block size and block times and how that calculates to transactions per second. So we can go from 17 transactions per second where we are now up to 6,400 transactions per second as this gets tested and proven in what we are calling a canary network. I've also heard it expressed as a chaos network because in the chaos network you can do all sorts of scenarios and just make it crazy and how would you ever have that many transactions? Who knows, but let's push the limit and, and let's do it. So yeah, uh, funding continuity. So that's the first thing. Motivation is scalability development. Second thing they list here is funding continuity. Absence of permanent funding source, future development is subject to the vagaries of market set sentiment. Let me read that again. Absent a permanent funding source, future development is subject to the vagaries of market sentiment. So, um, DCK provides for ongoing availability of resources through a linear emission model that provides a permanent development subsidy. Um, so, the robustness of of, to of coin supply is, I think is what they're getting at. It, the, the amount of, of coin production um, with the expectation of those coins continuing to have some measure of value, which, re which would result in a funding source. So um, that is the second motivating factor they put, they put in here is uh, what motivates this project, having funding continuity. The third one is future proofing. And, um, and I, so far I really agree with this order. I think scalability was, or is, um, the, you know, the primary motivating factor, even more user-friendly. Like right now it's fast. I don't, it, if you've ever tried to transact Bitcoin and, and, you know, okay, well I'll come back in an hour or more, sometimes it's days I've seen it get clogged up with Bitcoin and, you know, Ethereum, you know, it's hundreds of dollars, uh, even can be so, uh, you know, really expensive on Bitcoin too. Um, you know, that's a scalability issue. And we don't have those kind of high costs, you know, because we're Epic isn't worth that much yet. But we're also like already really fast. We, transactions are finalized in, in a matter of minutes, and sometimes if you're lucky in seconds. But what this does when we get down from a minute block time down to, if you can imagine 10 second block times, it will be just natively without, you know, um, other kind of conditions that you could work in to allow our merchant to, to, fi to finalize even faster. This is going to be natively uh, finalizing on the blockchain in a matter of seconds. So that scalability is huge. Funding continuity, um, I'm not on the fence, I would, I would say. I'm, I'm just eager to see how, how this performs. And I think, and I think it's going to take time um, for things like a, a rising liquidity floor to really take hold. Um, and it's going to take a lot of community involvement. But I think that's really where the, the people behind this are, are, are planning to focus on that meme coin aspect and the community of, of meme coin lovers that are out there that know meme coins are more than just fuzzy cute animals. There, there's also a lot of that valid utility in there. So that funding continuity to come, um, that's a potential angle or a pathway for um, investors since there's gonna, gonna be so much ECK um, out there. Um, so that's interesting and I look forward to seeing how the project leaders intend on using that Genesis block of 140 billion ECK at various points in the development of this. So. Spot on, on the order, you know, scalability, funding continuity, and now future proofing. Also hugely important because of the, the threats that are on the horizon. So, um, so in, in particular, what they're getting at here is, I'm just going to read it. ECK implements crystals dilithium structured lattices into its polyphasic proof of work scheme providing protection against quantum threats. Quantum computing. This is, um, they, you know, a year ago or so, they were saying, oh, you, you can expect 10 years, you know, maybe in the next decade. 
that you're going to see quantum computing as a relevant threat. And I wonder, and, and we already have crystals dilithium, which was a, a, a technology submitted to NIST, the National uh, Institute for Standards and Technology, something like that, um, NIST. And you already have solutions being submitted to NIST to uh, be quantum resistant and to um, thwart quantum attacks. So it's, it's refreshing, it's reassuring, gives some peace of mind to know that this technology is being developed well ahead of um, quantum computing threats. And I, I, I get really concerned that it will be sooner than, than 10 years because of things like AI. And I, I think um, artificial intelligence just has potential to change the calculus on the estimation of when quantum threats become tangible and practical. So long-term economic security. So top three there, very on point. Um, now going into long-term economic security. Uh, one criticism of fixed supply emission models, such as the 21 million of EPIC and BTC Bitcoin Core, is that at some point there may not be enough economic value in transaction fees to motivate miners to provide ongoing security. ECK addresses these concerns by always offering a block reward of new coins, regardless of fees. Remember, I think they said 1.4 million per day of um, ECK coins produced in, per in perpetuity for all time. So there will always be a supply. And this is similar, uh, Doge, I don't know if Doge is quite that many in the millions, but um, Doge also produces coins every day and like it has an, a, a never ending supply. So that's an interesting thing about Doge. And um, not just that it has the same supply or not just that ECK has the same supply as Doge, but it's interesting to, if you look at the price history of Doge, despite this ever increasing supply, its value has continued to go up in a consistent manner. So it's a little counterintuitive to where you think something with scarcity is going to be the one that continues to go up and up in value and it does but maybe more dr dramatically so whereas with something like doge you look at the, the values and it has kind of hits these plateaus and then it's like it, it grabs more share of the community it grabs more interest of people and the more people you have holding an asset um, they kind of set their price and they all kind of agree on if its usefulness and uh, if it's still something they want to hold and that's I think what we see happening with doge is um, despite the, the supply going up, there's still a demand and there's a reluctance of people who hold that and who apply that, dem that demand to release it or to sell it for, um, you know, below a certain price. And so I think there's something to be said based on the history of Doge for um, a certain store of value property despite um, having an infinite supply. So. We covered the long-term security, and then they also have this nice diagram there, um, illustration of the Bitcoin supply and Epic Cash supply, and showing how the Epic Cash supply matches up with Bitcoin supply at a certain point. All right, so finally, another motivating factor here is to test economic theories. Both Epic and ECK share similar features and utility. Where they differ is in their monetary policy which results in a different expression of time preference among holders. So interesting. So um, monetary policy results in a different expression of time, pre time preference among holders. So the expectation there is that probably um, people would be willing, more willing to do more transactions and move things around with ECK than they would with Epic. Epic is more of a hodl, ECK should be more, uh, there should be more incentives and creative fun things um, prompting people to actually engage and do more with ECK. So basic tax avoidance. Um, polyphasic proof of work, multi-algorithm mining. So this is another motivating factor. So we want to avoid the ASIC tax. Um, it said Bitcoin Core users spent one billion plus on mining fees in 2021. Publicly traded mining operations poured capital 
into ASIC farms, and they're now underwater. ECK avoids this entirely because mining occurs on commodity hardware. That's those CPUs and GPUs that are in everyday home computers. So it's another motiv motivating factor here is it's a hold space for later adopters. The unique mission profile of ECK modulates first mover advantage with higher inflation for longer than traditional crypto economic designs. ECK is designed with the future in mind, preserving a seat at the table for those who need a bit more time, for those who need a bit more time to take the leap to new forms of money. Because, and so what they're saying there is that because of that ongoing 1.4 million production of ECK coins, there's always going to be um, a lot of coins in circulation for people to either mine or even purchase on you know, um, various exchanges. So, all right, so that you know, later on when newcomers uh, uh, discover ECK, it will be very easy to acquire. Uh, unlock innovation. The, and so this is, I think, the last note they had here on motivations, or yeah, motivations. So a big motivation is unlocking innovation. The marketplace-driven necessity to innovate results in tension with the stability needs of Epic as a store of value protocol. As a canary network, ECK fulfills a strategic role as a testbed environment for new features and configurations that are up, that are coming upstream into Epic. ECK creates this developer playground, a safe space for innovation through a human readable test framework. All right. So anonymity and privacy, and then we, we're going to talk about confidentiality. ECK, like Epic, uses Mimblewimble to provide confidentiality and scalability. In Bitcoin Core, Key details about all transactions are available for open inspection on the blockchain. Location, address, and amount are all unencrypted and, invis and visible to anyone and everyone forever. ECK reveals neither address, nor amount, nor geographic location of parties to a transaction. Again, very similar to Epic Cash, which uses, uses Mimble, which uses Mimblewimble to um, so that there is no data on the blockchain. Public audit auditability and individual anonymity. On the public ledger, it is possible to see that all transactions have occurred thanks to the presence of their crypt cryptographic residue, the kernel in each block. However, only the sender and receiver are able to ascertain any details about the transaction beyond the mere fact that it occurred. Payment proofs facilitate opt-in third-party auditability of transactions. So that's a big one. We get a lot of questions about um, what about places where there's laws that say, you know, you can't have privacy coins because it, it doesn't allow you the ability to have accounting and, and auditing. Um, and the fact is here, it's explained in this ECK white paper. And this is very, this is actually true for Epic Cash as well that um, payment, payment proofs are available so that you can facilitate opt-in third-party auditing of transactions. Coin join. Much as with eggs, which once scrambled cannot be individual uh, reconstructed, all ECK transactions are aggregated together in each block. So that's coin join. Um, just explaining how, and this is like another uh, explanation on anonymity and privacy uh, and how basically you mix a bunch of coins together. Um, all you have are the uh, cryptographic residue, uh, the kernel in each block. Um, Bob can send to Ted, Al uh, Alice to Carol, and Bob Bob to Ted, yeah, Alice to Ted, but all you would end up seeing is Bob and Carol. And so there can be many other participants in uh, of transactions in that block. And CoinJoin makes it so that, um, first of all, there's no, there's no identity connected to anyone. Um, you just see that there was a, a sender and a receiver and, and you don't know 
who you don't know that they were Bob or Carol. You just know that maybe they're named Bob or maybe they're named Ted. But all that you see um, with CoinJoin, you can have hundreds of different um, part, uh, transaction participants, and all you would ever know is that there was a sender and one receiver. All right, cut through. Cut through aggregation eliminates unnecessary intermediate data elements, which reflects the final change in state. When Alice sends to Bob, who sends to Carol, the blockchain records the net change in state. Alice to Carol, and Bob's details need not be stored. This approach not only saves space, it also enhances privacy. So again, a big part of Epic Cash and ECK is um, Mimblewimble, which uses cut through and coin join. All right, Mo moving on to Peter's com commitments, another key part in Mimblewimble. Um, Peterson commitments are a type of cryptographic primitive that allows users to commit to a chosen value or chosen statement while keeping it hidden to others with the ability to reveal the committed value later. Aha, so they haven't really said it yet in here, but that's a zero knowledge uh, explanation. So it allows users to commit to a chosen value while keeping it hidden from others. So you're, you're able to prove a certain value, but it is hidden. That is also known as zero knowledge proofs. Um, uh, yeah, so zero knowledge privacy. Uh, so yes, and you can have the ability to reveal the committed value later, but you don't have to reveal it. But if you need to prove trust, you can. Schnorr Schnorr. <laughs> I might need a break. I can't believe I've gone this long without a break. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I might just mute myself for a minute. Oh no, crypto ne I forgot to share my uh, link in, um, I forgot to share the link in Discord. Crypto Never Sleeps, what's up my friend? Uh, thanks for joining in and thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you got everyone's, I love y'all. <laughs> Cool. So Schnorr signature. So um, yeah, I haven't said it in a minute, but I'm currently reading from the ECK white paper. It's, it's right there in the title of um, the live stream, anyways. ECK white paper live streaming. So at this point in time, we are in the um, an anonymity and privacy section of the ECK white paper. A lot of similarities to Epic Cash here, but moving right along, Schnorr sig signatures. As in Bitcoin Core, Taproot, Schnorr signatures provide for key aggregation, unlocking efficiencies in computational processes. Crucially, unlike in Bitcoin Core, Schnorr in ECK is applied to all transactions by default, not just a subset. This cryptographic hash function significantly increases users' privacy and enables complex transactions. All right, so... Um, other blockchains um, with ZK proofs um, have the, uh, like, I think actually Dash is an example. And, and in large part, I think a lot of part and a lot of their third party apps, they even disabled um, the privacy features um, so that they could remain listed on centralized exchanges. Uh, Dash is a good example of that. Um, there's, there have been other privacy cryptos uh, who uh, lar largely pronounced how private they were. And then when you went back and analyzed, their blockchains, it was revealed something, a huge percentage, maybe 80% or more um, were actually transactions in the clear um, that you could go in and do all sorts of chain analysis on. So zero knowledge, uh, ZK proof of knowledge, zero knowledge proof of knowledge is the next part they get into here. And yeah, I just thought it was interesting. Peter's commitments are actually sort of a, a, a basically are a zero knowledge um, expression as well. But talking about Zero knowledge, proof of knowledge, uh, which, by the way, is a big talking point narrative in crypto um, at this time. It has, I think it's been for quite a while, but um, in the 2023 coin market cap um, paper uh, where they cover all sorts of narratives, including AI and gaming and all that kind of stuff, they were, they hit, they hit, uh, actually fairly briefly, they kind of got into zero knowledge proofs, but it's relevant. It's a narrative um, and ECK has it. And 
What that does is it signifies that both parties may verify the truthfulness of a piece of information while remaining ignorant of the contents of the proven information. Sounds very similar to what they just said with Peterson commitments, where they said allows users to commit to a chosen value while keeping it hidden to others. A piece of information while remaining ignorant to the contents of the proven information. So set very similar definitions there. The basic principle is simply explained as such. If Alice has some secret information, such as the combination to open a safe, and Bob is supposed to verify that she has this information without him getting the information himself, then Alice will open the safe without letting Bob see the combination and then close it again. All right, so auditability and compliance, payment proofs. Again, this is the second time. So there's some repetition in this and I don't have a problem with that in this ECK white paper. I don't have a problem with that at all in any kind of white papers. When a point is to be made, it should be very clear. And it tells us again that payment proofs uh, are, are there for auditability and compliance. This enables payers to require payees to prove receipt of funds as part of the transaction process. Payers can then use these proofs to resolve payment disputes and prove that they sent funds to the correct payee. So for very critical payment processes, this auditability and compliance feature is here in ECK and it's also present in Epic Cash. Censorship resistance. Protocol level censorship. ECK is based on true distributed consensus according to the original Nakamoto longest chain rule based on an accumulation of computational proof of work. Network level censorship. It is possible to make transactions offline from cold wallet to cold wallet via simple file transfer method. This means that even when internet access is disabled, transactions can still be completed and uploaded later. All right, so very cool capabilities um, with the uh, being censorship resistant and um, uh, avoiding network level censorship that even if you don't have access to the network, you could still um, initiate a transaction now and finalize it later when you have network connectivity. All right, so uh, let's see what else here. Uh, so we talked about protocol level censorship, network level censorship, and user level censorship. So now with user level censorship, what they say is because their activity on chain is private and anonymity is maintained, users need not fear off chain retaliation. Access is anonymous and permissionless, allowing anyone with a network connection and compatible device to participate. So next up, we look at how ECK defends users against censorship and in such a way as it's a comparison with Bitcoin Core. So with custodian BTC users predominantly choose to allow third parties to custody their assets. Should anything happen to the custodian, the assets may be compromised. With ECK, users generally custody their own coins locally. Then we get into legal entanglements, ex post facto laws, retroactively applied changing laws make use of blockchain data to, criminally, to criminalize formal, formerly legal activities. Actions today, actions taken today can come back to haunt decades uh, later. Um, but with ECK, there's no permanent traces uh, left in the blockchain except for cryptographic residue, which reveals no information about the transactions or the parties to them. So what they're basically saying there is, uh, let's say that um, collecting comic books becomes illegal. And back in the day, you bought um, some comic books with your Bitcoin. Well, what they're, what they're alleging here is that, you know, uh, maybe it's something worse than, you know, comic books, but, you know, it turns out it's like a bad crime. And, uh, well, with Bitcoin, they could easily go back and do chain analysis on the blockchain and see uh, all these connections, especially if you use a centralized exchange and, and you had um, know your customer kind of information and you, put, you have your real name and address out there. Um, that kind of stuff can be used later against you. Um, on the native chain with Epic Cash, there's none of that. There's always, anytime you get mixed into centralized exchanges, um, even with private, cur private 
points, uh, you could be at risk, you know. Um, but at least with privacy uh, chains such as Epic Cash and ECK, um, the the transactions that were done on the name chain are they're, they're just not traceable. There's no there's no remaining information there to be excavated. So moving on here, they get into UTXO lawsuits. Individual addresses may be named in legal actions, giving rise to a Wyoming-based industry to try to protect against this with a rising with a rinsing period. This is entirely unnecessarily an ECK as all coins are fungible and interchangeable. So again, uh, traceable transactions, traceable coins that are possible on BTC just are not possible on ECK using that same Mimblewimble technology that ECK, uh, that Epic Cash uses. So Epic Cash and ECK, very similar in these um, counterpoints to BTC. Network, they talk about internet access to an internet connection is required to sign a transaction. Whereas with Epic Cash, transactions may be signed offline. Uh, that three-way handshake that happens um, with Epic Cash is distinct to Mimblewimble uh, blockchains. And a feature, you know, requiring both sides to take part and finalize the transaction. Uh, so, uh, you know, some that they call that that interactive transaction, which is a bug in some and it, to some people, but it, it's a feature in some ways as well. So off-chain retaliation, um, they talk about bank account seizures. Canadians who donated to truckers using BTC lost access to their bank accounts. ECK protects users from this because transaction addresses and amounts are invisible to external parties. Yes, so again, ECK transacted on the native chain, uh, on the native network is going to not be traceable, um, uh, connectable to uh, to centralized exchanges and to banks. So mining uh, on pools, the BT BTC mining pools are able to filter transactions based on permanent public key addresses. This is impossible in ECK because transactions are inter interactively constructed on a wallet to wallet basis using temporary addresses. Tainted coins, sanctions, the OFAC SDN List includes specific addresses. Anyone transacting with these addresses faces exposure. So um, those addresses just don't exist in Epic Cash or ECK. Um, so it's, you, you couldn't really list. You, you could list like an Epic Box wallet, or maybe even they'll have like ECK Box or something. Um, but those are very fro. Those are addresses that are, are not stored on the blockchain. So um, and, and they're throwaway. So you can say that about Bitcoin as well. You could throw away, uh, you can throw away a Bitcoin address and spin up a new one. Um, but the transaction, the difference, the key critical difference there of those addresses is that on BTC they're stored on the blockchain, and so those transactions are always viewable. Um, yeah, mixer wallets. Centralized exchanges such as Binance block transactions to mixer wallets such as Samurai and Wasabi. Since ECK is fully fungible, along with Epic Cash being fully fungible, this eliminates the phenomenon of tainted coins at its source. Um, you just don't have the same traceability on the native chain. All right, confiscation resistance, addressless design. Donors in Canada recently discovered that sending as little as fifty dollars worth of cryptocurrency on a transparent surveillance blockchain may lead to off-chain consequences such as having bank accounts and even physical assets seized. ECK transactions are constructed directly peer-to-peer -peer on a wallet-to-wallet -wallet basis, leaving no permanent traces based on public addresses. Confidential transactions, nosy neighbors, and tyrannical regimes cannot monitor wallet balances for activity. ECK makes cryptocurrency safe to use for everyone. Designed for self-custody. Users in Korea, whom their government believes to owe taxes, found their wallets drained. ECK users generally maintain custody of their own keys, which protects against arbitrary seizure. So not your keys, not your crypto, as they say. Um, you know, this is sort of, um, BTC has gotten away from itself with uh, so many more centralized ways of um, holding the digital assets, um, wh whereas 
newer cryptocurrencies such as ECK and Epic Cash, um, mostly the applications that you have for securing the digital assets are self-custody. So, and they're getting more and more user-friendly, um, such as uh, applications like Epic Pay and Cypher Stack Wallets, or also known as just Stack Wallet. These are two very good mobile wallets that you can use for Epic Cash and um, soon to be available for ECK when ECK gets mainnet and there's some more developer support on the Epic Pay mobile app. So again, Epic Pay, if you wanna get your mobile app for Epic Cash, go on Android or iOS um, app stores and you will be able to get the Epic Pay wallet. It's a great wallet. Uh, you can even swap other cryptocurrencies to Epic Cash. Cool stuff. All right, so decentralization, and then we've got this nice big map uh, with listing the 126 countries and over you know, 2,250 cities since December 2022. Um, unique instances of the um, Epic Cash nodes being spun up. So ECK will benefit from the same uh, protocol level coin join and cut through compression. Uh, so the ECK blockchain fits in under five gigabytes, synchronizing in three hours rather than taking uh, as long as it takes for Bitcoin Core, which is like three weeks. So ease of use, emoji transactions. Transactions are available using only emojis, which opens up new possibilities to bypass censorship and monetize content. So, and they've got this nice illustration of what an emoji uh, transaction looks like. It looks pretty chaotic and hectic, but I look forward to giving it a try. Error proof send. Unlike earlier cryptocurrencies where an errant keystroke can lead to lost coins, it is impossible to lose funds in ECK because there is no mechanism to send to a wrong, bad, or obsolete address. Transactions sent in error could be recalled. Nice feature for ECK. You don't have to get anxiety that, oh, I, you know, I copy and pasted this thing and I left a character off there. I added a, a white space, you know, a blank space at the end and now uh, my transaction is ruined. No, that doesn't happen in ECK or Epic Cash. Okay, then we have slate packs, which are a universal standard for the exchange of transaction information, both synchronous and asynchronous. All right, um, interesting little uh, statement they have in here about slate packs being a universal standard. Uh, so, it's, so it's basically how uh, Mimblewimble, that my understanding is, it's kind of how Mimblewimble transactions exchange information um, in, in both a synchronized way or it could be asynchronous where you have to wait for the <clears throat> transacting party to respond to your slate pack and sign their part of the signature. So it kind of ties into that. Economic security. The fixed supply nature of Epic introduces an important question, namely, what might happen if user fees are insufficient to provide ongoing security for the network? ECK provides a linear emission of 14.4 million coins per day indefinitely. In this way, as long as there exists anyone anywhere willing to provide the necessary computational, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. In this way, okay, let me just start over here. So ECK provides a linear emission of 14.4 million coins per day indefinitely. In this way, as long as there exists anyone anywhere willing to provide the necessary computation at any level, the system remains secure indefinitely. Regardless of whether fixed or infinite supply monetary models ultimately prevail, Epic Tech offers a solution. All right, so yes. So um, different monetary models, different economic uh, security models, and we will see how the two play out. So emission, linear emission of 14.4 uh, million coins a day. I don't know where I got, I think I was saying 1.4 million per day before, but my bad. So it's 14.4 million coins per day. All right, and remember that initial genesis block is going to have 140 uh, billion. So yeah, just doing some quick maths here. Okay. Anyway, inflation. 
Unlike political economic systems which face unpredictable, unpredictable inflation rates, the ECK rate inflation is immutable and remains constant with respect to time and coin per second forever. ECK monetary policy is disinflationary, which means that the rate of inflation is constantly declining over time. The stock to flow ratio gradually improves. So it's interesting. So there is some disinflationary uh, properties to ECK uh, over time. So I'm not sure how that works because it's constantly the same, but they, they're saying that over time, uh, inflation is constantly declining. So I can imagine that loss of coins could factor in there. Um, and maybe there could be some burning mechanism. Um, so those are possible ways that um, the, even though the supply is is constant, there could be other levers uh, put in there that result in burning or um, otherwise uh, destruction of the overall supply um, and some loss uh, of, of, of those coins intentional, intentionally by design. Um, so that'll be interesting to see how that might work out. All right, so yeah, that was inflation and empowering innovation is up next. The Innovation Fund to drive innovation, ECK directs 11% of these block rewards to provide bounties to private, private technical contributors through Epicenter Labs grants program. Fungibility. Because ECK features mandatory protocol level coin join, all coins are identical, making them perfectly fungible. All right. Um, let's see. Ordinal spam protection. Ordinal spam is impossible in ECK and also impossible in Epic because of uh, stuff just in the stored on the blockchain. Only the kernel resulting uh, of the transactions are kept in the blockchain. And again, not all transactions, but just a transaction to verify that the supply has, a, has not changed. So regu regulatory compatibility, and under that, they say no ICO. EZK begins without an initial coin offering or investor sales. No corporation. EZK is not the product of a sponsoring corporation. It's, it's not the product of a, of a sponsoring corporation, but there could be, uh, you know, a corporation spun up on the side here. Um, hmm, that's interesting. I, I could be wrong. I, so um, maybe I misunderstand. So, so that I have, I, I have heard that there could be a corporation spun up in the background, uh, but yeah, I just don't know enough about that to really comment further. Um, but you know, it's it's not. Hmm. It's not like it's. Uh, I guess that. Hmm. That's so weird. I'm trying to figure how to express you know the community impact on this because I'm a community member. I have some impact on this. I helped out a little bit with the white paper, but um, yeah, so there's no corporation. It's governance free. Miners alone determine the course of the network evolution. There's no central authority. ECK exists as a permissionless open source software that can be run by anyone without uh, any central control. Interesting, so it's free and open source software. There's no corporation. So I, I, I think I remember what I, say, what I wanted to say about no, no corporation. So um, it's interesting to see where corporations might want to get involved in a cryptocurrency project. Um, and it's like, how, how does that happen? Um, so I, I again, th these are like kind of uncharted territory for me, but uh, yeah. There, since there's such a vast, a, a more vast supply on that Genesis block, 140 billion, you know, who controls that? Does some of that go? Could could some of that go to a, a you know, an outside corporation interested in um, providing resources in some way? Uh, you know, that's that's to be seen. Um, maybe, maybe there's maybe that's part of the um, funding flexibility that we get, um, or maybe not. Maybe it's all just you know reliant on cryptocurrency communities growing and people participating in the ecosystem. So we'll ha just have to see how that unfolds. Um, miners, are, so governance free, we've seen problem, 
problems with um, governance models being attacked by the CFTC, the Commodities Federal Trade Commission, um, where they go after governance models, uh, they go after a, a DAO and people on the DAO. Um, minor, miners alone determine the course of the network evolution. Hmm. That's a very broad and grand statement to say miners alone determine the course of the network evolution. Um, but yeah, the majority of the coins are produced or go to the miners. 100% um, of the coins are produced by the miners. Well, with the exception of the Genesis block, <coughs> which is a pretty significant portion. So that's, yeah, uh, so, but it's governance free. So this is why it's regulatory uh, compatible. No ICO, no corporation, governance free and no central authority. ECK exists as permissionless open source software that can be run by anyone, anywhere, without any central control. All right. Um, the Howey test. ECK is explicitly designed for Howey test compatibility, score, scoring literally off the charts according to Crypto Rating Council guidelines. Cryptocurrencies, these are replacements for Sovereign currencies replace the dollar, the euro, the euro, the yen with with Bitcoin. That type of currency is not a security. So said Jay Clayton in June 2018, who is the chair of the SEC. Then we've got some nice illustration of scalability, which we've gone through quite well, but this compares it against Bitcoin and XMR and the ETH chain file. Uh, and it compares all those, those chain sizes um, ECK and Epic Cash being around two to five gigabytes, whereas XMR is around 140 gigabytes. BTC is well over 400, if not approaching 500 gigabytes. Ethereum is like eight terabytes. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And that's why they want to do their um, sharding so that they'll have some sort of chaotic um, expression of, you know, multiple chains in existence all over the place, but it'll somehow all be synchronized. And you can imagine that's taken them some time to get that, um, to get those ducks in a row. So, but yeah, regardless, like how are you gonna run these, these other chains on a mobile phone? You can't, and that's why ECK and Epic are, are so cool. Why is ECK so light? Uh, we already covered this, um, cut through Peterson commitments and Schnorr's signatures. Node potential, uh, again, we're gonna hit on that 15.1 billion eligible mobile devices have sufficient disk space, four gigabytes, to run a full node and eventually mine. We have surveillance resistance. Uh, surveillance coins such as Bitcoin Core expose their users to risk by revealing the IP addresses while making a transaction. Dandelion++ protects users by concealing their location. And then it goes on to give a descri description of Dandelion++ which is a lightweight and straightforward network layer solution with formally guaranteed anonymity. A transaction originating in Ontario, the stem phase, may finally touch down in Canberra, which is considered the fluff phase. Dandelion++ prevents users from experiencing physical Bitcoin attacks, which are um, attacks based on geolocation of Bitcoin IP addresses where people go and actually attack people for their Bitcoin. I2P, I2P is an alternative channel for use in regions where Tor is inaccessible. Since E2, epic transactions have been available through I2P, Tor. The Tor network is a secure encrypted protocol that can ensure privacy for data and communications on the web. Known as the Onion Routing Project, T-O-R, Tor, the Onion Routing Project, the system uses a series of layered nodes to hide IP addresses, online data, and browsing history. Sustainability, e-waste. Because it runs on commodity equipment already in service that was purchased for another purpose, ECK mining generates zero incremental e-waste stream. Technology pipeline. Thanks to polyphasic proof of work, ECK avoids the problem of vendor lock-in and, collat and car cartelization in the mining hardware supply chain, any arbitrary number of algorithms can be implemented, not dependent on user fees and definitely economic. With a block reward always on offer, the network is always able to provide for its own security through dilution of existing holders. So yeah, the very first thing on the front page was 
Um, let's go look at that. They talked about being green, energy efficient. Energy efficient, green. All right, and so, shoot, I did it again. It's killing me. I don't know why it does that. I just tried to drag this thing down and it shifted the whole page over to the right. But here in these illustrations, I'm just gonna have to refresh this again. All right, so see if I can, why does it do that? I dragged the little thing to drag it down and it, I'm just gonna have to page down here. No, I didn't let me page down either, thanks. Garbage, okay. But in these illustrations, you know, green energy efficient, you know, and, and here they're, they're, they're the, the white paper gets into sustainability and talking about the e-waste and technology pipeline. And you hear, you see these illustrations here, these pictures of a bunch of ASICs that are just, you know, uh, done. <laughs> They've served their purpose and they are now ready to be thrown away. Um, and that's, hi, live and learn. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in here. Um, so yeah, I'm just reading from the ECK white paper. I'm just about finished. Uh, yeah. Use cases for ECK, uh, so they have here buyer protection. Non-recallable payments present a challenge for widespread adoption of e-commerce. Because buyers have no easy way to hold vendors accountable if they are unsatisfied with their purchase, Epicenter solved this by allowing sellers to escrow ECK to protect their customers. So um, these financial um, use cases are a little above my level of understanding at this point in time. I think I just have to see these implemented. I think uh, it might take some time before we see that in the wild. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe some of the developers behind this project um, already have things ready to roll out. Um, we do know that there have been different touch points with um, e-commerce and vendors, um, even uh, getting uh, Epic Cash. Uh, and I know we're talking about ECK right now, but um, there have been talks about getting integrated with uh, gift, things like gift cards and uh, other ways to use um, the, the, the digital assets for payments. So, so wheels have been turning for years. Maybe this is getting closer. Um, but yeah, so we talked about that buyer protection. Then there's karma. ECK can be used as a reputational signaling mechanism inside the, e inside the Epic ecosystem. Kisses ECK is used to show appreciation for content in the context of social media. So in social media um, expressions, those would be expressed, you know, if you sent ECK to someone that may be considered a kiss. Um, if it were used as reputational signaling, then that's what they consider karma. That reminds me of Reddit, you know, if I think there's like karma ratings in Reddit. So I think that might be similar to, to that, except for in this um, expression as a digitalized asset um, attached to a valid mechanism to uh, signal. Kindness, ECK is used for tipping, complementing the role of Epic and EUSD in payments. So we talked about karma for reputation, kisses uh, for appreciation uh, for, for content, and kindness as tipping, as, 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 a, as a tipping um, iteration to complement the role of Epic and EUSD in payments. So that's interesting, EUSD is, is mentioned in here. Um, not sure if that's a typo, because EUSD will take a while. So yeah, I might need, again, this is a draft um, version of this ECK white paper. And if you're joining recently, <laughs> then the really big nuggets were way up ahead, and this is almost concluded. So, and I've spent a lot of time kind of um, going off script from the white paper and just kind of adding in my own personal inputs. But um, yeah, so use cases for ECK, karma, kisses, kindness, knowledge. ECK is earned as an incentive for the acquisition of new knowledge through the Epicenter New Knowledge Initiative. <laughs> That's a lot of knowledge. All right, so yeah, you can imagine, you know, um, computer-based training or, um, maybe a short quiz or test after some reading assignment to see uh, what, what you retained, uh, perhaps that, it, that could be rewarded with ECK. Kudos, ECK is used as a reward for making a positive con con contribution to the Epic mission. So 
you know, you go out and you make some content, uh, uh, you make an instructional video on how to use the Epic Pay mobile wallet or how to mine Epic Cash or how to mine ECK, since I'm reading from the ECK white paper. Uh, somebody sees that and they, uh, you know, ideally here there's some systemic process where it's easy to send the ECK to someone as a kudos for that content creation. And that's about it. I went about 15 minutes over, um, but I was kind of high, feeling my high energy Izzy tonight. Yeah, this was this was the high energy version. I've been I've been working out. <laughs> I just that's kind of what I say jokingly to people. That seriously, I've been jumping on the elliptical a little bit more, but to um, more often than usual. But yeah. So what has happened here to recap? And I will go back to the. Um, uh, how do I want to recap this? But I said at the end of this. Um, paper that you would uh, read at the end of this <clears throat> at the end of reading from this ECK white paper and having listened to this you would understand how ECK is energy efficient it's fast it's lightweight it's green it's flexible <clears throat> it's future proof and it and how it's a social currency so starting with this and, and also how it's a canary network and yeah I feel like I explained that I explained the Canary Network fairly well uh, right up front that it's there for testing new technology before it makes its way onto the Epic Cash mainnet. And it's also there to potentially find uh, pitfalls and, and hazards and risks that may ex exist on the existing mainnet. So if we see something happen, uh, go see some problem in the ECK main, uh, mainnet, we may uh, end up applying a patch or a resolution to, to Epic Cache's mainnet. So two big things there, development and innovation, and uh, as well as security patching um, that can come out of this Canary network and be applied to the Epic Cache mainnet. So it's energy efficient, talked about all those nasty ASICs uh, and you know how we don't have to use those power hogs and we can just do the um, general purpose computing uh, processors, your, your CPUs and your GPUs, and how there's billions of gamers in the world that can participate. Um, you know, we are interested in, in not just gamers, but that's, that's an obvious kind of starting point. That's how I first learned about Bitcoin. I was knee deep in uh, gaming, and I was hunting around for um, one thing or another about how to get better at this gaming, and one of the websites had this flashing thing about Make money in your sleep, you know, just use your CPU to mine Bitcoin. And I didn't get very far with that, but this is a similar um, thread. Um, and there's still a lot of people out there to, that can benefit from that, even if they're not a gamer. Um, a lot of um, just workstations, high-end workstations, or your average computers are, are just getting more and more capable um, of being able to mine cryptocurrencies with a, with a central processing unit. Um, CPUs have really blossomed um, after GPUs have really stumbled uh, for being profitable. But, um, and, and that's a good point to Nakamoto's initial um, musing that one CPU equals one vote. And to see that kind of, um, I think in the practical world, um, being even more, uh, <clears throat> or being just as profitable um, and practical, I would say it's there's a big uh, advantage to practical being practical for CPUs and CPU mining right now. So yeah, um, fast, lightweight, green. Uh, and, again, and again, a lot of the same kind of features we see in Epic, but the gist of it, that like, and, the, and, the, and they get at it, they get after it when they really talk about it in the motivation, the scalability development that we make the user experience even faster and um, and more capable for more users to come into the main net, uh, to come into the network and use Epic Cash. That scalability, development, funding, continuity, and future proofing. To me, that those top three. If you walk away with anything um, about ECK and how it can benefit at Epic Cash, you really look at that motivation section that I'm looking at right here. Motivation, and I highlight that, and looking at those 
top, I mean, really the top four, <laughs> really all, all the motivations are, are unlocking innovation. I mean, how can you argue that that's not important? But, but really, you know, they do a good job of prioritizing how they listed these. Um, scalability development, the, the thought of going from minute block times down to 10 second block time for Epic Cache. That's significant. That's really exciting. So you can imagine if you've transacted Epic Cash like I have several times, and it might take a minute or two, which is way fast already compared to Ethereum and Bitcoin and XMR. But now you're getting into the realm of a, a 10 second block time, you know, six times faster. You're, you're definitely looking at transactions uh, finalizing in, in a matter of seconds. Um, and so funding continuity, I look forward to seeing how that, how that plays out. Um, it's, a, it's a huge um, consideration in how ECK is being developed. And so it's a financial uh, economic experiment in a way. And uh, just as Doge has proven uh, that it's possible with an infinite and ever-growing supply, uh, that's what the developers of this ECK are planning to explore and see what happens. And then future proofing that crystal dilithium. We know quantum computing attacks are coming. Um, it's something to be relevantly concerned about. Um, when you own, when you when you're a quantum computing attack, when when you are the power behind, when you are the individual or the nation state be, behind a quantum computing attack, and you are successful in breaking an algorithm, you own. <laughs> You don't own just like a, a you know a session a transaction. Uh, you have the capability then to unlock. You have the keys to the kingdom. You can very quickly, as astronomically uh, crazy to think that you could own elliptic curve cryptography and be able to pick out each and every point on that arc and know and have a filtered list of valid private keys and public keys, meaning that you could instantaneously just go and open up all these wallets and do whatever you want with the funds. That's power. And that's scary to know that these quantum co computers are going to have that ability to break the legacy cryptography that was used to build uh, cryptocurrencies. That's why everyone is so concerned about quantum computing. If, if it was one off, you know, oh, if they could get you here by this public address or, you know, if they, you know, no, it is the, it was, it is the risk of, of um, being completely owned by, by a quantum computing attack. And so that's what um, Crystal's Dilithium gets us is um, instead of an arc, uh, you have a structured lattice with points on the structured lattice that you, that um, a quantum computing has to figure out how to get to. And it's this endless maze of overlapping um, lattice structures and point-to-point -point, uh, pathways that have to be maneuvered in just such a way. It takes that number. It's, it's, it's a creative way of making the astronomically huge number, even astronomically huge number, even bigger. <laughs> it just... It's crazy. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Live and Learn. But um, it's about 9.30 on the Pacific and about 8.30 here in Alaska where I am. I really appreciate you all tuning in. Um, I will be um, trying to upload this to, to YouTube and so that there will be more of a, a persistent um, place for this data to be reviewed and that's about it that's about all i have i'm gonna wrap things up here um what else do i have here i will be doing more uh white paper readings uh live streams but i but i will try to get this more persistent so that it's l less time dependent you bet live and learn um i am learning as well and i think reading this aloud uh kind of exposes me on certain parts when I try to elaborate on some things. Like I can't always elaborate as much as I would like to. I said I was going to talk about the merge. Um, they actually omitted that. And um, 
it's not it's really not even since they admitted it it's really not too worth getting in there there was a hot minute where the merge is um where you incur fees based on uh how long it takes to move a digital asset or, or just an asset generally speaking and so you know theoretically you can have demerge to it at extreme sense where you start with a hundred dollar asset and if you keep it static and you don't move it from point A to point B within a certain time and you keep incurring fees, that hundred dollars could turn into zero dollars. And so people were like, that's, you know, and I can, I can imagine uh, use cases and creative uh, test uh, scenarios that the developers could do where they could say, okay, we're going to have this sandboxed ex ex example of, of demerge where, um, ordinarily your assets aren't going to experience demerge. We're not going to con constantly, uh, you know, rob coins of holders. Um, but in this instance, we want to experience a hundred thousand transactions. And so, um, you can participate by moving your coins into a place, but there was just like all sorts of complications with that. And in the end they said, you know what, well, if it's worthwhile, we can come back to it, but there's other ways to, encourage and incentivize transactions so that's a, it's going to be interesting to see how ECK rolls out because um, that's a, a big part of it is is getting network participation from uh, participants um, to generate transactions and there's already um, capabilities internally to do that with servers you can just mass massively rapid fire a bunch of transactions and you can run scripts that that generate transactions so yeah all right um, Man, I always have a, this is my, the most difficult part for me is figuring out a way, this is what I need to get better at, is like closing, closing things out. But, um, hey, that's it. Uh, more to come. Um, I will look at how to get these uploaded to YouTube as far as um, the Epic Cash white paper reading as, as well as the ECK white paper reading. Um, and with that... We will see you next time. See you out there on Discord and uh, Crypto Never Sleeps party people. And then as well as the Telegram. Uh, we're very active in Telegram. We have some stuff in Discord for Epic Cash. Um, we have some new moderators over there. We're always trying to um, expand our community and grow um, our participants. So big thanks to our moderators, new and old. Um, so new moderators uh, there in Discord. Um, and if you have questions, uh, there's going to be probably more people in Telegram. So that's t.me slash Epic Cash for anyone that's uh, punched in and listening. But yeah, um, great times. Really enjoying uh, the ongoing community developments and, you know, in Epic Cash and just in crypto, generally speaking, uh, we have a long ways to go. And in, in cryptocurrencies and the relevance and the problems that are, are being solved uh, are meaningful. The Satoshi Nakamoto Bitcoin white paper was probably the next step in our financial evolution to, to address the problems of centralized banks. And so cryptocurrencies like Epic Cash take it the next step and refine um, that problem solving capability that was there in Bitcoin by, by asserting really important cryptocurrency fundamentals such as privacy, such as scalability and um, resistance to um, uh, cent centralized influences. And I'm just looking forward to keeping that going and, and being surrounded by people who, who get that part of it, who get the problem solving part of it. And then and, and the next hurdles that we have to overcome and with that i will leave it and see you next time